In this lecture, I'm going to walk you step by step throughout the process behind this conversion. So we are going to end up with this image and start with this original photograph. So let me delete all those layers and let's start from the very beginning. So looking at this picture, I know for sure that I need to mm, bring up her face. I would like to brighten her eyes to sharpen them in the end, to strengthen the highlights in the eyes, to make the face more three-dimensional by strengthening the highlights and darkening a little bit the skin tones in the shade. Overall, I need to control the light, so I will need to darken the background as well and probably add a little nice vignette to make the model stand out even stronger. Okay, so let's begin. In a similar way as with the previous picture, I'm going to convert this one to black and white with channel mixer. So I'm going to add the channel mixer adjustment layer to this image. Okay, let's check which of the presets is working best for this particular image. So let's try with the blue filter, but as we know from the experience, black filter will always darken the skin tones. It always darkens the red shades and oranges, so it's not really working in this case. Usually green is the best. Orange is brightening. No, I think, yes, we will use green filter as a starting point. Previously, we have used it as well. So having the green filter chosen as a starting point, let's see what can we do if we can manipulate these values a little bit to have a little bit more contrast from the very beginning before we start manipulating with adjustment layers. So I'm going to drag these values to the left and increase maybe this one. Basically, I would like to brighten her skin tones. Increasing the green value is adding nice highlights to her skin tones. Decreasing the red is darkening the lips, is darkening the reds. I have to be careful because it's darkening the skin tones as well, which is not a best idea. So let's push it a bit further. Now we are over 100, it's 130. So to balance, I need to move maybe this one towards the left to approach 100. Okay, I think this will be a reasonable choice. So that way we have our basic black and white conversion with the channel mixer. Let's now add the first curve to darken the background. So I'm going to layers, new adjustment layer, curves, hit OK. Okay, so let's move over to the properties palette. With this adjustment layer, I want to darken the background. So I'm going to select the targeted selection tool, click on the image in the area of the tones that I want to darken, click, press, hold and drag down. This can be a little bit too much. Yes, I think this will be nice. Now I need to paint with the black brush over the mask of this layer to remove this effect from her face. I don't want her face to be that dark and I don't want to lose details in these areas of hair. You can see in the histogram, it's reflecting how these tones are clipped, how I have lost all the details in these dark areas. So when it comes to the background, it's the result that I wanted. However, in the hair, I would like to make this uh, darkening a little bit less prominent. So having the mask selected, I'm going to paint with a soft brush with the black color. So I'm pressing X on the keyboard, changing the color samples, now pressing B, selecting the brush. Opacity 50 could be fine, decreasing the size of the brush a little bit and just painting over those areas that I would like to brighten up a bit. Remember, be careful around the edges. Right now I started creating a halo around her head. No, I don't want to do this, so I need to press X again and now paint just with the white color, so I'm going to bring back this effect, press X again and continue painting with the black color with a soft brush. So what I'm doing now, I'm just removing this effect of darkening from those areas that 
I would like to keep a bit brighter when it's too strong. I don't want to remove this darkening from the arm since I would like to have the face really stand out. However, the blending between these areas that were affected with the adjustment layers have to be really, really nicely blended. We don't want in the end to be visible that we have manipulated on the image in a very strong way. We can brighten the hair a little bit more here. Okay, I'm happy with the result. The background was nicely darkened. Now the model is standing out stronger. Having done this, let's now add another adjustment layer to create contrast in the image. Let's add the classic S-shaped. So having selected the thumbnail, I have available the properties windows for that curve. I'm going to place the first control point around here drag it a little bit down. Don't go too far since we have already this area pretty dark. And this one I'm going to push a little bit upwards. I'm going to move this point up since um, I don't want the head to melt with the background. I want to have this distinction still visible. Let's see how this changes affected the image. Yes, they made the highlights stronger. However, the shades became too dark, so I think around this point it will be perfect. As we can see in the histogram, there is still a little bit of highlights missing. How can we fix this? I can just drag the white point slider towards the left hand side. That way I will add highlights in the image. Just keep your eye on the histogram and be careful not to push too far, not to create any clipping in the image. Yes, I think around this area it will be perfect. Let's now work a bit on her eyes. I'm going to zoom in even more. I would like to strengthen the, the highlights in her eyes. So let's add another adjustment layer, curves, okay. And this time having the thumbnail selected with the targeted selection area, I'm going to sample directly from this little part here and make this highlight stronger. Don't worry about the rest of the image. We are going to mask the eyes later on. I think like this should be fine. Now let's sample on the darker area in the eye. Let's sample here. That way I will get the control point here and let's start dragging this point a little bit down. Let's see how does it look like before and after. I need to push these points up a little bit more. At the moment I'm just focusing on the eyes. The rest of the face is not important. I will mask it later. So I want to keep these dark areas dark and just brighten the highlights. Let's sample again here. So this is indicating then this part that I want to brighten is place exactly here. Okay. Now let's mask the eyes. So as we can see, those changes affected the whole image. However, I don't want to have it that strongly visible here. Uh, let's change the mask to black. So having the mask selected, I'm pressing Command I. And now with the soft brush with white color, I'm going to paint over the image. First, I'm going to paint over the eyes with 90% opacity since this was the most significant change I wanted to achieve. Okay. However, like this, they are looking very unnatural. We need to balance it with brightening the highlights in the skin tones. So the effect will be still pronounced, but much more natural. So now with the soft brush, let's just paint over the areas that we would like to highlight in the image. We can work a bit on the hair, maybe a bit on the neck. Let's see how it looked like before and after. I would like to brighten this eyelid a little bit stronger. Maybe I will increase the opacity of the brush. I have changed from 
20 to 70. Okay. We can increase those highlights a little bit more on her hair as well on this side. Since this part of the face was lit the most, we can easily strengthen those highlights. And I would like to make this part of the hair a little bit brighter. This was too much, so I'm going to decrease the opacity of the brush to 20 and paint over her hair. I'm working very fast just to show you the idea behind those tools and behind those techniques. Obviously, if I was working on an image for print, I would spend much more time on targeting particular areas in the image that I would like to adjust. So now the point is to show you the overall method. I would like to brighten a bit this part of her arm, so I'm going to be painting on this layer with a black brush to make the effect given by the adjustment layer less pronounced. Maybe a little bit more as well on the hair. So a little bit more here on the, in the shadows, a little bit more on the hair. Okay, now I would like to apply a gradient coming from the bottom of this image to mask her arm as I want the viewer to focus on the face of the model. How can I do this? First, I need to create a new layer, which I'm going to do by pressing Shift Command N, now hitting OK. And I'm going to just fill this layer with black color. So I need to select Paint Bucket Tool. That way the whole image is black. Now I need to add mask to this image. I'm pressing this little icon here. And the easiest way will be to invert the mask. So I'm pressing Command I. Now the black is not visible at all. To make it visible only in the corner, I need to paint on the mask. This time I'm going to paint with a gradient tool. So I'm going to select gradient tool and paint with a white color. So I'm pressing X to change the color samples. And let's try to apply the gradient from the bottom. Maybe we can zoom out and apply it in a more soft way. Yes, and now on, I can still modify this mask by painting either with a black color or by manipulating on the opacity of this layer. Since the result I have achieved was a bit too strong, so I would like to keep it around 65 and maybe remove from the top of her arm. In order to do this, I need to click on the mask. So I'm going to paint over this part of her arm with black color. So I'm going to select brush, I'm pressing B and changing, swapping these samples, pressing X. Now I have brush and black color selected and I'm going just to, in a very soft way, make this arm a little bit brighter. Okay. In the end, we can sharpen her eyes in the same way as we have done this with the previous image, since the eyes are very, very beautifully lit. They are very nicely pronounced and giving them a little bit more strength will help us to achieve dramatic result. So having the top layer selected and pressing Shift, Alt, Command, E on the keyboard. And that way I have created stamp on the very top of the layer stack. Having this layer selected, I'm changing its blending mode and I'm going to change it to overlay. Next, I'm going to filters, other and high pass. Here, usually the best value that works for high res images would be around one to two. So I'm going to leave it at two. You will be working with smaller image. So probably these values will be too strong. You need to apply it, experiment and check which presets will be working best. So now I just want to mask this layer. So I'm pressing this little icon here, inverting the mask and now painting with a brush with white brush with white color over the black mask. So I'm pressing B 
swapping colors of my color samples, decreasing the size of the brush and just painting over the eyes to apply the high pass filter to sharpen the eyes. In case of this picture, it is still image with shallow depth of field. However, these parts of the eyes are sharp. So in a natural way, I can sharpen them a bit as well. You can see how sharpening these little details is affecting the image. It's really, really very important touch. Let's have a look how the image looked like before applying the sharpening and how does it look after sharpening of the image. We are ready with our edit. I hope you enjoyed the creative work. With all those adjustment layers, we were able to convert our initial color photograph into the black and white striking and dramatic version. See you in the next lecture. We are going to be working on next photograph.